The third piece of our foundation also concerns the economy, but only in a much broader context, and that's planning. To a great degree, this is about anticipating and preparing for growth. By every estimate, New Rochelle will grow, probably by as much as 5,000 residents in the next 20 years. The question for all of us is not whether, it's how. Unplanned growth can overwhelm services and add to our burdens. Planned growth can steer construction, population, and commercial activity to areas less dependent on the automobile, less reliant on fossil fueled energy, and with the greatest potential to stimulate our business climate. This kind of planned growth also has a much lighter impact on our school district. And that's not a guess, it's a fact. The new housing already built and occupied in downtown New Rochelle is producing students at only a quarter of the rate of the city as a whole. So planning is the key to ensuring that growth benefits today's residents and does not threaten the community qualities we all wish to protect. It starts with comprehensive local planning. A good comprehensive plan sets priorities for zoning, public investment, redevelopment, and preservation. That doesn't mean a fixed and rigid prescription for every block. You need enough flexibility to respond to the private marketplace and to changing conditions. It does mean an accurate picture of our city as it is and a compelling vision of our city as we want it to be. New Rochelle's current comprehensive plan is 15 years old and predates dramatic changes in our composition and aspirations. It is time to bring our comprehensive plan into the 21st century. Our, our planning staff has already begun this process with community meetings concentrating on one of several focus areas, the West End. We heard residents talk about recreational space, parking, streetscape, access to transportation, what works and what doesn't work. During the next two years, we'll take an intensive look at other portions of the city that are ripe for positive change. For example, Memorial Highway, which presents great opportunities to connect Sound Shore Medical Center more fully to its surroundings, an effort that will get a big boost from a federal grant jointly administered by the city and the hospital. Lower North Avenue, which along with Burling Lane and Garden Street enjoys unparalleled access to mass transit and has unrealized potential for reinvestment. And the Central Business District itself, including the sites I mentioned earlier, which remains the locus of growth possibilities in New Rochelle. Our local plans will do a lot of good just on their own, but they'll be even more valuable when embedded in a regional framework. Here, too, the work is underway. New Rochelle has taken a leadership role in a bi-state consortium that includes the cities of Connecticut and the Hudson Valley, and that extends also to New York City and Long Island. Every one of these communities is linked by networks of transportation and commerce, and every one of these communities will benefit from strategies that acknowledge our interdependence. Better connections between workers, employers, and customers, better travel options that save time, money, and fuel. There's a practical value. Through this regional partnership, we're newly eligible for federal dollars. And I'm happy to say that the consortium has just received $3.5 million from HUD, with our portion slated for improving access to the New Rochelle Transit Center. And there's another value. Because in truth, just the exercise in and of itself of considering these regional questions inspires us to think in more creative terms. Our region has been ambitious before. Memorial Circle was intended to be the first phase of a direct link between the Cross County Parkway and the New England Thruway. The old Boston-Westchester line was nearly made into a curving arterial from northern to southern New Rochelle. Imagine how those actions would have shaped the present day. Now, please don't get me wrong. We're not going to raise any neighborhoods to make way for highways. That was a far different time. But we can explore regional options that are right for our time. Light rail, 
bus rapid transit, and trolley that could give our transportation hub a 360 degree link to the surrounding world. We can lobby for federal and state recognition of energy conservation districts, enterprise and empowerment zones for the 21st century. We can augment the mere replacement of aging features like the bridges that span I-95 with new designs that enhance appearance, public space, and the pedestrian experience. And please don't think this is only about bricks and mortar. In the end, it's about people. It's about a senior citizen on Locust Avenue who will finally be able to do all her shopping just by walking around the block. It's about a family on Glenwood or Wilson enjoying a neighborhood that won't be overrun by traffic. It's about kids on Union who will play outdoors in a real park instead of a lot. It's about teenagers on Lincoln or Broadview or Barad who won't have to move a thousand miles to find a job that pays or a home they can afford. And it's about a young couple, maybe one drives to work, maybe another takes the train, looking for a place to start their lives together. There's nothing that locks us in to what is, so long as we have the imagination and foresight to plan for what might be. Every bit as significant as New Rochelle's place on rail and road is New Rochelle's place on Long Island Sound. So the fourth piece of our stronger foundation is a vital active waterfront. At Echo Bay, we continue working to take land that is today heavily contaminated and entirely inaccessible and transform it into a neighborhood that's clean and that welcomes the public to the shore. Now, there's no doubt this has proven to be a difficult and complicated undertaking. In part because of the tough economic climate, opening up Echo Bay is taking longer than we had hoped. But when it comes to a site that can shape the character of New Rochelle for a century or more, patience and persistence are virtues. In this spirit, we have both extended and revised our partnership with Forest City Residential. For its part, Forest City is examining changes in the configuration and phasing of the proposed project. The working assumptions, preservation and adaptive reuse of the armory, fewer housing units and roads, redesigned parking that is less dependent on excavation, and vitally, the continued presence of public parkland and waterfront access. Steps that respond to community input and adjust to overall economic conditions. For our part, with funding from Forest City, we are commencing a more complete and in-depth examination of public costs and benefits. After four years, it is time to update our assumptions, to better measure the anticipated return on any investment, and establish a more rigorous and quantitative basis for proceeding. This process will also facilitate an honest and much needed discussion about the city yard. The facts are the facts. The city yard is aging and aging poorly, barely adequate for our present needs, and prone to a rolling series of minor emergencies that claim our scarce dollars. Under any circumstance, even if it doesn't move an inch from its current location, the city yard will demand a significant investment in the years ahead. The real question, do we expend tax dollars simply to keep our sanitation trucks parked on the waterfront, or do we instead take this opportunity to free up the shore for higher and better uses that all can enjoy? Of course, Echo Bay isn't the only waterfront site that's receiving a fresh look. One year ago, the council called for a new examination of David's Island. Since then, a volunteer task force of residents and experts have been hard at work, looking at the constraints and obstacles that any plan would have to address, and outlining concepts for potential reuse. That examination is still ongoing, and it will be several months before the task force wraps up its work. But I'm encouraged by the sensitivity and balance demonstrated so far and by the constructive input offered by many in our community. 
Our aim should be a homegrown vision for a site unique in its character and value. A vision that brings together the environmental and economic objectives that have historically been at odds, and that after 50 long years, unlocks the natural beauty and unparalleled setting of David's Island for all the people of our city and region. What better way to claim for a new era New Rochelle's status as the queen city of the Sound.